Okay, so this is weird. There's a program in Antarctica right now and several years ago, and it's picking up these very bizarre signals that scientists say they can't explain it. So I'm going to share that with you. Rex Bear Leak Project, how the heck are you? We've also got other breaking news today. Not only do we have strange radio pulses detected coming from under the ice in Antarctica, but also NASA is tracking a vast anomaly, which is growing in Earth's magnetic field. Do you remember this article? University Southern California study confirms the rotation of Earth's inner core has slowed, potentially reversed. What? Oh, yeah. Is it all connected? Also, what about the extreme weather, the Cat 5 hurricane, the um, amazing magnetic storms and the CMEs and the Aurora Borealis in the lower 48 states, the hurricane that hit the Hurricane Melissa, the most intense winds to ever hit Jamaica Mon. This is wild. And I think there might be a connection. So we're going to get into it. We're going to look at the latest reports and information available. So buckle up, buttercups. Let's go. First article that I wanted to share with you is from the University of Southern California. I reported on this in 2024, and I was one of a very few select. There, there weren't a lot of people reporting on this, like the mainstream news I thought would be all over this, and they weren't. CNN did a small piece on it. But this is you uh, literally from the USC. So look at this study confirms the rotation of Earth's inner core has slowed. Now, the new study provides clear evidence that the inner core began to decrease its speed about 2010. And we're going to get into more of that in a moment. I think it could be connected to this. NASA is tracking a vast anomaly growing in Earth's magnetic field. This is from Science Alert. This is Penn State. Strange radio pulses detected coming from ice in Antarctica, actually under the ice. This is the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory. This is where it gets really interesting. The Ice Cube rules out last standard model explanation of Anita's anomalous neutrino events. Just going to read it real quick. The Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory is possibly the strangest telescope on Earth from its home at the South Pole. It sits and waits for fundamental particles called neutrinos to pass through its 5,160 optical detectors buried in the ice. When a neutrino interacts with a hydrogen or oxygen atom in the ice, it produces a signal that Ice Cube can detect. But Ice Cube isn't the only neutrino experiment in Antarctica. There's also the ANITA which is the Antarctic Impulsive Transient Antenna Experiment. It's basically a balloon that flies over the continent and it points radio antennas towards the ground. It searches for radio waves, extremely high energy neutrinos. Those are hundreds of times more energetic than the ones that Ice Cube commonly detects that can produce intense radio signals when they smash into an atom in the ice. Now, this is where it gets interesting. The signals that they're detecting they can't explain. They're saying there's no way they're neutrinos. They don't know what they are. And I mean, that's where the speculation is going to run wild. A lot of people are going to be like, well, yeah, maybe it's an underground base. Maybe it's extraterrestrials. And I don't think it's either. I think it has something to do with the Earth's inner core. I think that the Earth's inner core somehow is sending certain signals and it's slowing down and our magnetosphere is changing and the earth is changing and we're detecting these signals that are also from the changing atmosphere. Now, it could be something completely different. And I'm I'm willing to look at all the options and all the ideas and all the possibilities. But I would say that's probably number one on the list. Now, let's look into this a little bit more. These balloon flights that Anita claimed to have detected a few events that appear to be signals of extremely high energy neutrinos. However, the Ice Cube collaboration decided to investigate and in a paper submitted to the Astrophysical Journal, they outlined their search for an intense neutrino source in the direction of the events detected by Anita. The collaboration found that these neutrinos could not have come from an intense point source. So basically, they're looking for other explanations for these anomalous signals because they're saying that they, they're not neutrinos. And I think that's amazing. Um, this is also talking about it from Penn State University. Let's go into some more details on this. I've got notes. 
So the Anita Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory is in Antarctica, the South Pole, if you're just joining us. And so researchers using the Anita balloon experiment observed these radio pulses, and they appear to originate from below the Antarctic ice and its steep angles, which are inconsistent with particles passing through Earth. The ice cube conducted eight years of research and searched for neutrino sources corresponding to those signals and found zero matching sources, thereby ruling out the last standard model astrophysical explanation for the Anita anomalous events. Anita detected upward going shower like events. So it sounds like these things are shooting up from underneath the ice, not down into the ice. And if they were from a known neutrino source, Ice Cube would have seen many more. And since they didn't, the standard explanation fails. The mystery remains. These are either new particle physics or some unknown propagation ice effect or something under the ice. Like, can you imagine if it was some ancient Anunnaki technology or something? And they're like, they were in some cryogenic chamber and they were starting to wake up because they've got this 12,000 year clock on and they're, you know, they set the time for 12,000 years right before these major cataclysms happen. So they wake up and then the mothership shows up and beams them off planet, takes them to Mars. And then Mars gets rebuilt and then they jump back over to Earth a few hundred years later. Anyway, it's a really cool sci fi thought that I just had. But <laughs> the region is expanding and weakening. It's affecting. Oh, yeah. Now we're going to get into the second the second uh piece of news here. Sorry, I got a little discombobulated when I started talking about sci-fi stuff, but it's exciting. It's exciting. Now, this is exciting. It's frightening and it's fascinating. ScienceAlert.com. NASA is tracking a vast anomaly growing in Earth's magnetic field. So what does it mean? Well, that's where it gets interesting because it could potentially be related to the Earth's inner core slowing down. Once again, this is from USC Today, usc.edu. And then NASA is tracking this really bizarre magnetic field anomaly. And let's look into this. There's these satellite missions that have found Earth's magnetic field is including a, oh, sorry about that, a large and growing weak spot dubbed the South Atlantic Anomaly. The region is expanding and weakening, affecting satellites and exposing spacecraft to higher radiation levels. The anomaly points to complex changes in Earth's outer core mantle system that generates the geomagnetic fields. A weaker field means less shielding from cosmic and solar charged particles, possible effects on Earth's environment or detection systems. Yeah, more radiation, more exposure to cosmic radiation is what it comes down to. They're trying to sugarcoat it, but it's, it's essentially more cosmic radiation. Now, I've got a Geiger counter right now that's saying we're at 0.22 microsieverts per hour out here in Southern Colorado, high elevation. That's totally normal. Um, I haven't, you know, I'll tell you, when I was outside of Area 51 earlier this year with my friend Lee Wilbarger from KLW World News, we went to a bunch of different spots out there. Um, we, we heard music coming from Area 51, like we were picking up music with uh, equipment that they had, which was pretty cool. And we saw some, some pretty fun stuff out there. I actually uploaded the uh, um, behind the scenes on Patreon. If you want to check that out, it's like over an hour and it's about an hour and a half and I've got more to upload, but that was a lot of fun. So that's on our Patreon page. Just type in Patreon leak project and get some good stuff. Uh, if you're a Patreon member, we've got like hundreds of hours of exclusive content over there. But regardless, I was, I was out there at this one location where they call it the, uh, the cell tower mountain. And we're looking down and we can see a part of area 51 uh, on the other side of some of the mountains there. And as I'm there live streaming it, my Geiger counter that I had on, I've got another Geiger counter that was on at the time and it just started blasting. So uh, <laughs> I think what happened was a piece of radiation got in, like dust got on the, the, the sensor and was just sitting there. But regardless, let's get back to the, the article here. So NASA and associated satellite missions have found the Earth's magnetic field includes a large and growing weak spot dubbed the South Atlantic Anomaly. And then we're dealing with this core slowing down. So a study from the University of Southern California found the Earth's inner core has slowed down relative to the planet's surface. And this started around 2010. Additional findings show structural changes and deformations in the inner core shape and boundary layer. So it's changing shape 
in the structure of the core, which is really interesting. And now, um, obviously, we haven't been in the core, so the way that they're the way that they're studying the Earth's inner core and it moving is through seismic data and earthquake data, and they're adding it all into this computer software that uh, basically maps out what the core looks like and what potentially is in the core, and it's pretty fascinating. But if we if we connect all the dots, if we look at the Earth's inner core slowing down this extreme weather, I mean, I'm in southern Colorado and we still don't have snow. We're getting some rain, but we've been dealing with uh, just these incredible auroras that the sky is red all the way out here in Colorado, many of the states in the lower 48. When was the last time? <coughs> when was the last time that that was normal? It seems like it was, it's been normal this year and last year, but before that in 2003, a little bit, but not nearly this extreme and it's getting more extreme and the weather is getting stranger. Hawaii just had snow. Hawaii got snow before Colorado. That's kind of weird. That's kind of weird. And I think it's all connected here. So a study from the university of Southern California, yeah, we just went over that, but what's up with these radio signals? Let's go back to these radio signals that they say physics don't explain it. You know, we don't know what it is. This is an anomaly. We get this anomalous signal or these signals coming from under Antarctica's ice. We have a magnetic field anomaly showing the Earth's magnetosphere is changing significantly, which suggests internal dynamics are shifting. Obviously, the Earth's inner core slowing and deforming, pointing to changes in Earth's deep interior mechanics. So these internal changes could absolutely influence the structure and behavior of polar ice sheets, radio wave propagation through ice and earth, potentially explaining these weird signals that are shooting up. The effectiveness of Earth's magnetic shielding altering cosmic and solar particle flux, which might trigger detection anomalies. So my hypothesis currently is the strange Antarctic signals, the shifting magnetic field and the inner core slowdown are not isolated phenomena. They may be symptoms of a larger planetary shift. So that is the current theory on um, these strange radio pulses. And I wanna get your thoughts and comments in the comment section. And check us out over on Patreon, check us out on Rumble. You can be a, uh, a Rumble member for free and it helps the algorithms. If you'll say hello in the live chat, hit the thumbs up here on YouTube as well. Hit the bell for all notifications. And thank you all very much for being here. Shade, thank you very much. Uh, I hope the inversion isn't too intense out there in. Uh... Oh, OK. Would you just look at it wants to know this? That's a good question. I'm not keen to how they measure the core. They measure the core through seismic data. And they've got like 80 years worth of seismic data, I think, through not only earthquakes, but but other sensors and satellites that they have available, some of the technology. And they've been tracking the Earth's core through these seismic waves. And then they've got this program that basically maps it out and creates a visual of this object in the Earth's inner, the Earth's inner core and what's actually in the Earth's inner core. And it's kind of deforming and it's it's not uniform per se at least they don't think that it is so that's how they're getting the information and yeah yeah thank you very much much appreciated have a beautiful evening be the change you want to see